Your life experience, good or bad, is a gift when you share it with others. At Taxi Chronicles, we allow real riders with real stories to share their gift. So hopefully this episode will intrigue, enhance or inspire you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Morning, morning, morning. Yes, we're back. Another rider, another story. Today we're honoured to have a lady who's going to teach us about trees and plants and generally nature, but in the office. So nice to have you here today. Morning. 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 Okay. So tell us, when did you first get into the business about trees? Um, maintenance? probably about 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, I started off doing um, uh, landscape design at uni. And then, um, I, then I caught an interest in, in plants from there. And then I started doing like garden maintenance and stuff like that. Um, uh, at retirement villages and offices and stuff like that um, and then once I came here I found the the I suppose, interior side of it more and then it's been really good. Uh, it's, yeah. it's funny because you never, well as a layman I never think about, you see plants everywhere, mm. trees, you never think about their upkeep. Yeah. It's just a shame they do their own thing. No it's sort of like a um, an invisible thing that just sort of is there and no one really notices it, but it makes a big difference. Like, it's, yeah. yeah I suppose it's cleaning the air. Yeah. It's, it's stuff like that. What would you say you, um, now give us a typical day of what you do. Um, well, now in the company I do like the operations management. So, um, I, I started kind of just in the company doing like flower makeup and like looking after the plants, but then now I work in the office, I, I organize all of the, um, the work that we do so like where everyone's going and um or organizing basically uh, what plants we're installing plants we're changing it's like the teams that we have are like driving into london and um visiting all the different offices and uh, things like that so i do all the um the backbone of the like organization so when uh, you were hands on what, what was it like um, well, I used to do a lot of um, flower makeup. Um, I used to do a lot of uh, like planting. Uh, we did like quite large installations where you'd get like all the containers in, large ones, and then you'd get all the trees in, and then you'd be planting them at the warehouse, and then we'd be loading the vans on the trucks, and then we'd um, drive them into central London, and then we'd um, like install them into the offices, onto the floors. Um, so that was quite, uh, I, I enjoyed that, it's quite physical. Um, but now I'm more uh, like at the, I suppose the warehouse based in the admin and then also organizing like the stock and stuff like that now, so. I understand, someone told me once, and you'll probably correct me if I'm wrong here, <clears throat> that with a tree, the roots run as wide as the, the branches go out. Yeah. Unless you've trimmed it. Yeah. So if you put a tree in an office, surely it's going to interrupt the structure. It'll, um... So the tree will only grow as uh, as big and as tall as uh, the, like the roots allow. So it won't really like the trees. The leaves will grow bushier, but it won't get like much bigger than what it is. Um, it's restricted to the size of the pot. So it's like they don't want them to get too big in the office because they don't have enough space anyway. So it's kind of like when you put it in the pot, it'll it'll stay like a similar size. It'll get a bit bushier, and sometimes fill up the whole pot with roots and stuff like that but so those parts have to be a special kind of reinforced concrete then um we've got yeah different pots we have um like stone pots that we have to line with like waterproof uh, polythene kind of liners yeah. and then we also have fiberglass like custom made stuff as well okay. there's a lot of stuff at the office at the moment that they're doing like fiberglass um like beds and cabinet tops yeah. um so yeah, they're like all kind of, I suppose, fiberglass, custom made now. Mm. Yeah. What I'm thinking is the roots <clears throat> are kind of strong, and they must be able to penetrate through like a normal pot. That's why I spoke about the mm. reinforced concrete. No, no, not 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 really. Um, we do get um, 
plants that have grown roots so big that they'll like take up the whole thing and they'll kind of attach their roots to the side of the thing but it won't go through the plastic or the fiberglass or anything i've not seen that okay yeah so when you're cho- when uh, so a client will call you and say we've got this office we need some nature mm. um and then when you are selecting the plants how do you select the plants what are you what are you based in it? Yeah, so it depends on um, like mostly the light and where it's going to be positioned in the office. Like we will suggest places that they should put the containers and the plants um, so that like, and then if it's in a slightly shadier spot where it's no natural light um, or like semi-natural light, we put like more shade tolerant plants in those areas and stuff like that. So you have a great knowledge of plants. Yeah, not bad. What's your favourite plant? <laughs> Um, I really like uh, ficus trees, um, oh, so ficus. ficus liratus, which is like a fiddle leaf tree, fig tree. Oh, it's a fig tree? Yeah, yeah. You don't get them in London, do you? Sorry. You don't get them in London? No, no, we, we order them, at, we get them all like grown from the nursery in, in Europe mainly, um, so they they come from overseas. Okay. Oh. Yeah. But they grow here as well? You can grow them here once you've been them over? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you just have to put them in like a, you know, slightly, like, good position here. Otherwise, you know, they just won't do as well. But they're grown in the nurseries over in, like, Holland and Germany and stuff like that. I see um, some trees. I'm not sure if you call it trees, like uh, tropical trees. And they got plastic bags around them. Yeah. Uh, I assume that's to deceive the tree that they think it's hot. Um, you mean when they're all like ready to get moved oh, somewhere else and potted? Like if you go to Covent Garden, mm. is it Covent Garden or Kew Garden, sorry, they wrap them, they've got some of the tropical trees in plastic, even in Battersea Park. Oh, the um, like the whole Actually, tree, yeah, just the bottom, the trunk, the trunk. Bit. Oh, right, it's uh, like a jacket, I thought it was a jacket or something. I think a lot of that is to do with um, not having uh, like critters and like pests like climbing up the tree trunks as well because they can't grip onto the plastic a little bit of the time, oh. so they can't climb into the tree. Oh, is it? Okay, I thought they'd just go under. Okay, yeah. Well, um, I'm not sure exactly like what it looks like in my head, so maybe it's something different. But what would you say you've learned that you wish you knew when you started? Um, I don't know it's a hard question uh, for me because it's just more like you just actually keep learning on the job like it's nothing like too too complicated it's just more like the knowledge that you get from it um, uh, familiarizing yourself with it but um, no I'm, I, I'm not sure actually okay, no. no problem no problem so, for a young person who's considering getting into the industry, mm. what would you say is the best educational route for them to take? I think there's quite a few, um, like, um, you know, the horticultural courses. Um, it depends what side you want to get into, I suppose. If you want to get into just like, uh, we do the horticultural side to so maintenance and looking after the plants, and we also do like, sales part they have to have a knowledge of plants as well so it's good to start off doing like um we've got people have done like the q courses um and then also other you know practical horticultural based courses as well um but i started off doing obviously landscape design courses anything that's kind of like you know plant-based yeah okay that's good good. is uh you spoke about doing a degree is there an apprenticeship scheme that it can be done to save the person money? Um, I, th- I think there's, I mean, I don't know about over here to be honest. Um, so even in even in um, New Zealand. Um, I think companies will probably do like a a garden, like maybe exterior sort of more maintenance um, apprenticeship, but I'm not really familiar. Mm. I haven't looked that up. So. Okay. Mm. Well, Frank, you've been a great guest. My last question to you is what's the impact you want to have on the world? Ah, okay. Yeah, I just want to keep everything a lot more green. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, 
Yeah, um, and I think it makes it it's so much nicer and everyone can just, like, be, like, you know, a lot more appreciative of their spaces and being able to look after them, make them look nice, even if they're, you know, outside of your environment, being able to sit in a, in a green space instead of having so much concrete around. I think it makes a big difference. Yeah. Uh, there's one last question. Yeah. M- Maintenance-wise, what are the big issues that happens with plants and things like that? I had a plant once, mm-hmm. not very good with nature, and it got loads of little flies, so okay. I threw it in a bin. Yeah. Because I thought, your diet, something's wrong. Mm. I don't know what to do. Um, So it depends on what's happened to it, I suppose. A lot of plants um, can suffer from either overwatering is a big issue um, and sometimes underwatering, but it's a little bit... So when the plant gets um, stressed from not having, like, regular watering, like, the right amount, it can get, like, problems like um, fungal issues or, like, pest issues and stuff like that. So it can retract, like, um, pests that then you have to then spray regularly to try and get rid of them. So you have, like sort of like natural ways to do that or like a systemic spray that um to help but it can be quite tricky and, and pests you have to keep a keep on top of really um regularly so it's a lot of um it's a lot of uh like i suppose uh, time and dedication it actually like you know you spend a little bit of time you're like looking after something that's alive um but yeah it's just knowing kind of getting used to your plant because it actually adapts to how you are taking care of it and watering it a bit okay. yeah so uh, and, and the watering of a plant depends on the plant it does yeah yeah oh, okay. and it depends also where you put it because if it's going to be in a less kind of hot sunny spot and if it's going to be in a you know um, somewhere with not so much light or anything like that it's going to need less water um as well so we just always test test the soil. So put your put your hands in the soil, see if it's moist. Also look up, try look up the plant that you have and see like how much water it likes, most of the time. But well, yeah. generally, you're better off putting plants in the light. Um, so. most plants will um, if it's indoor tropical plants, they will like sort of indirect sunlight, so near a window, so they have a lot of natural light. But sometimes the full sun can be too strong, mm-hmm. especially in summer. Um, but it depends on the plant. Um, they won't always want to be next to the window. They kind of want to be a little bit further back. So it's it's hard to hard to judge, but okay. yeah. Well, thanks a lot for that. No problem. Thank and, you. And we wish you well. We hope you liked that Taxi Chronicles interview. Don't forget to share and subscribe to get the latest episode. Ever considered investing in a continent with the fastest growing economies and population on Earth? The same continent that holds 30% of the world's known natural resources. Listen to our sister podcast, Africa Investor Stories, where you hear real investors with real stories from around the world share their experience of investing in Africa. We post Monday and Thursday at 10am British Standard Time.